Hey there, fellow sleep enthusiasts. Today, we're gonna take a scientific deep dive into the world of sleep tracking with the Oura Ring 3's latest beta sleep stage tracking algorithm. Now, as a scientist and sleep tracker reviewer, I'm constantly on the lookout for the latest and greatest in sleep technology. So I headed to the sleep lab and tested two different Oura Ring 3's for three nights, comparing their results to a professional scientific sleep stage tracker. And let me tell you, the Oura Ring didn't do half bad, though it did have some issues. Now, during my testing, I compared the Oura Ring 3 sleep stage tracking to a polysomnography device, which is considered the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. And I wanted to see how accurate the Oura Ring 3's algorithm was at detecting the different stages of sleep. So REM sleep, light sleep, and deep sleep, and also detecting my awake time. But I didn't stop there. I also compared the Oura Ring 3's performance to dozens of other popular smartwatches and health trackers, and against the previous generation, the Oura Ring 2. This way you can find out how the Oura Ring 3 stacks up against the competition. So let's get ready to geek out with me about the science of sleep stage tracking and the Oura Ring. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. To test the Oura Ring 3's new beta sleep stage algorithm, I spent three nights in the sleep lab in Salzburg, Austria. The lab is run by Professor Manuel Shibus, who is an expert in sleep research. Professor Shibus kindly provided me with the equipment and the people needed for my testing, and I'm grateful for his help in making this possible. Now, just as a side note, in a future video, I'll also test an app for sleep stage tracking and sleep improvement that his team developed. But back to the Oura Ring. During my testing, I wore both the Oura Ring 3 and a polysomnography device, or in short, PSG device, which is considered a gold standard in sleep stage tracking. Now, this polysomnography device measures your brain waves, eye movements, heart rate and muscle activity to accurately track your sleep stages. And by wearing both devices, I was able to compare how well the Oura Ring 3's algorithm tracked the various stages of sleep against this scientifically validated data from the polysomnography device. And I actually tested both the old and the new algorithm on two Oura Ring 3 devices to see how much the beta algorithm has improved. In this video, I'll therefore provide you with a comprehensive comparison of the Oura Ring 3 sleep stage tracking performance against the scientific gold standard, and you'll also find out how it compares to other popular smartwatches and health trackers on the market. So if you're curious about how the Oura Ring 3 stacks up against the scientific gold standard, then stick around. I've got all the data and analysis you need to make an informed decision about your next sleep tracker. Now, as I said, I tested two Oura Rings, but I want to start off with the results with the one I wore on my ring finger, since the other ring had battery issues on the third night of testing. And here you can see an overview of the performance of that ring over all three nights. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by the polysomnography device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the beta sleep stage algorithm of the Oura Ring 3. We want to see how close the sleep stages of the Oura Ring are to those of the PSG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the PSG device was predicted at each sleep stage by the Oura Ring. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all, we see that 85% of what was deep sleep according to the reference device was also detected as deep sleep by the Oura Ring. And this is quite good and I'm not disappointed at all with the performance of the Oura Ring. If there was disagreement, the Oura Ring predicted light sleep instead at about 15%. But all these percentages will make much more sense if you look at the individual nights. And here we have the results for the first night. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by the PSG device with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom is a similar plot but now for the sleep stages as recorded by the Oura Ring. And if we now mark the deep sleep as recorded by the polysonography device in purple, we see on the bottom that there's quite a good agreement between the Aura Ring and the PSG device when it comes to deep sleep detection for this night. Basically, all of the deep sleep segments that were detected by the PSG device were also detected by the Aura Ring. Now, there are some small deviations in the exact duration of these segments, but the overall performance is really good. But let's move on to the second night to see if this is also the case. And that's what we have right here, the second night. And as you can see, there's also quite a good agreement when it comes to deep sleep, though not quite as good as what we saw for the first night. We see that basically all of the deep sleep detected by the PSG device is also detected by the Aura Ring, so right here and right here. But the Aura Ring also detects a bunch of extra deep sleep, so right here, right here and right here. But overall, this isn't that bad at all. And looking at this third and final night, we see more or less the same thing. We see that basically all of the deep sleep detected by the scientific PSG device is also detected by the Oura Ring, though the Oura Ring did miss this small segment right here in the middle. However, again, what I think is most obvious is that the Oura Ring does tend to detect some extra deep sleep. In this case, it detects some extra deep sleep right here in the beginning of the night, but also near the end of the night. Still, I would say it's actually doing quite well. Light sleep agreement is also very good at about 76%. 
percent. This means that 76 percent of what the scientific PSG device detected as being light sleep was also detected as being light sleep by the aura ring. Now in this case, the disagreement can be with any of the other sleep stages. Now first of all, we see that most of the extra deep sleep the aura ring detected was light sleep in reality, and that's this percentage right here. But we also see that it confused light sleep with REM sleep and awake time. And we can actually see that a bit better based on the individual nights. Now this is a similar plot to before, but now with the light sleep as tracked by the PSG device marked in cyan. And as you can see for this first night, overall there's a very good agreement. There's some minor disagreement. And in this case, most of the light sleep was predicted differently by the aura ring was predicted as awake time. You can see that in the beginning of the night right here, but also right here and also a bit near the end of the night. But still, overall, it doesn't look that bad, honestly. And for this second night, we see something similar. Most of the mispredictions by the aura ring in terms of light sleep were actually predicted as a wake time by the aura ring. But we also see that some of what was light sleep in reality was actually predicted as being deep sleep by the aura ring. You can see that, for instance, here, but also right here and right here. And we can even see that it was predicted sometimes as being REM sleep, as you can see right here, for instance. And the third and final night right here basically confirms what we've seen so far. Much of the light sleep is correctly detected, but some of it is confused with deep sleep, REM sleep, and also awake time. Overall, this is still looking quite good. Now, REM sleep is the sleep stage that the aura ring struggles with the most. And this is also what we saw in my other testing, where I used an EEG device as a reference. In this case, we see that about 55% of what the scientific PSG device detected as being REM sleep was also detected as being REM sleep by the aura ring. However, we also see that about 41% was detected as light sleep instead. Now for REM sleep, it's actually very important to look at the individual nights. So this will allow us to check if at least the locations of where the REM sleep segments occur is roughly correct. And that is displayed right here for the first night with the REM sleep according to the PSG device marked in red. And as you can see, I had five clear REM sleep segments right here, 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 and here. And as you can see, the aura ring picked up on four out of five of these, so that is quite good. However, it did indeed miss this first segment right here. And also overall, it did tend to detect less REM sleep than the PSG device for this night. This also means that we can see most but not all of my sleep cycles based on just the data for the aura ring. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked in blue and each one ending in REM sleep marked in red. And as you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles this night. And you can see most of them, though again, not all of them based on just the data from the aura ring because we're missing this first one right here. Now this second night actually looks a bit better even where we can see all four REM sleep segments based on just the data from the aura ring. Interestingly, again, the aura ring does tend to detect less REM sleep. Still, we're able to see all of my sleep cycles based on just the data from the aura ring 3, so this is not looking that bad at all, even though the overall agreement wasn't that high. Interestingly though, for the third and final night, the agreement was quite a bit worse. In the beginning of the night, the agreement was still okay, with the first two REM sleep segments also being picked up on by the aura ring, though this first one here is really brief. However, here at the end of the night, I had three or maybe two and a half more REM sleep segments, and the aura ring wasn't able to pick up on any of these. This of course also means that for this third night, it would be impossible to see all of my sleep cycles based on just the data from the aura ring. We might be able to see the first two, but for the second half of the night, none of it is possible. So it's actually interesting to see that for this third night, the aura ring struggled quite a bit, whereas for the first two, it did quite a bit better. Awake time detection was again also pretty good, showing 78% agreement with the scientific reference device. And almost all of the awake time that was misclassified was instead predicted as being light sleep by the aura ring at about 18%. And here we can see that both the PSG device and the aura ring detected many short awake moments and I marked those detected by the PSG device in green right here. Luckily many of these short awake moments match between the two devices as we can see right here in the beginning of the night but also right here in the middle of the night so this is looking quite good. There are some awake moments that do not match between the two devices as you can see right here for instance but also right here and even here there's some disagreement but overall for this night it's looking quite good. But for this second night, we actually see a larger disagreement, especially here in the beginning of the night. The aura ring detected a lot of awake moments and the PSG device detected far fewer right here. And at the end of the night, we actually see the opposite. The aura ring is detecting more sleep compared to the PSG device, which Chesel was awake most of the time right here. Finally, for the third night right here, we again see a good agreement between the aura ring and the PSG device. Most of the awake moments here match between the two devices. So overall, it's actually looking quite good for the aura ring when it comes to awake detection. So based on this, I'm actually quite happy with the performance of the Aura Ring 3's new beta sleep stage algorithm. However, all of this is based on a single Aura Ring. So let's see if the second Aura Ring Generation 3 award at the same time on my index finger gave similar results. However, first a quick side note. 
If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the second order ring. And that overview is displayed right here. So on the left we have the results we were just looking at for the order ring on my ring finger. And now on the right we have the results for the order ring on my index finger. Now for this second order ring, the one on my index finger, I actually only have two nights of data since it had battery issues on the third night. I actually ended up getting a replacement from Aura since the battery in this ring ended up getting really bad. Now as you can see, the patterns between these two results are very similar. For the second ring, we see that the deep sleep agreement is roughly the same, though slightly lower at about 77% versus the 85% of the other one. Though again, it's very similar with also all the confusion being with light sleep. Now, light sleep agreement is also very good at about 79% compared to the 76% of the other aura rings. So again, very comparable. And in this case, the confusion is mostly with deep sleep and awake time, similar to what we saw for the other aura ring. Also for the ring on my index finger, REM sleep detection was by far the most difficult, showing a 56% agreement. This is very similar to what we saw for the other ring at about 55%. And again, most confusion is also with light sleep in this case. Awake detection is again pretty good and the results are almost identical to what we had for the other ring. So 78% versus 78%. So overall looking very similar. In general, it seems that both aura rings performed about the same and I'm quite happy with their performance. The only thing they seem to struggle with is detecting the correct amount of REM sleep. So the one thing I want to take a look at quickly for the second ring is if the position of the REM sleep sequence is at least roughly correct. And that is displayed right here for the first night with similar to before the REM sleep as tracked by the PSG device marked in red. And we see that in this case, the aura ring detected too little REM sleep, but it was able to detect the correct position of most of the REM sleep segments. Again, though, it does seem to miss this first shorter REM sleep segment, which is very similar to what we saw for the other ring. So we are able to see most of the sleep cycles based on just the data from the aura ring, but again, we missed this first one right here. Now the second night again also looks a bit better where all of the REM sleep segments as detected by the PSG device are also detected by the aura ring. So we are able to see all of the sleep cycles based on just the data from the aura ring. The main downside is that the aura ring again generally seems to detect too little REM sleep overall. Now this is actually the main reason why it showed such a low REM sleep agreement in the percentages we were just looking at. However, if it is consistent in its low REM sleep detection, this might not be an issue since the trends might still be true. So the aura ring might correctly pick up that some nights have more or less REM sleep than others, though the total is not correct, it can detect this variation between the nights. But in order to confirm those type of statements, I still need to do more testing. So the aura ring seems to be doing quite well, however we need to put this into perspective by comparing its performance to dozens of other watches I've tested over the last years. Now this graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the normal reference EEG device I used to test them. Now this normal EEG reference is called the Dream 2 EEG headband, which measures my brainwaves and eye movements, similar to how the scientific polysonography device does it, but it has fewer electrodes and are also attached less reliably. However, it's good enough, I think, to get an overall impression of the performance of different smartwatches. On the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see based on this testing, the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches, in this case the Apple Watch Series 7, the Apple Watch Series 8, the Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Ultra. But also the H Sleep Pod 3 is doing quite well. And also based on all these tests with the Dream 2 EEG headband, we can see that my two aura rings aren't doing too bad at all. They're right here and right here. And as you can see, they're among some of the top performers. And basically I would say if you look at their overall agreement here along the horizontal axis, Access, they're very close to the different Apple Watches, and other good devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps, and also the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Now as a next step, I want to put the PSG testing from this video in this graph right here, but before doing that for the Aura Rings, let's now put the results from the Apple Watches that I tested in a previous video in there. And that's what you can see right here. So in blue here are the results for the Apple Watches as tested with a PSG device, and these were actually tested on the same nights that I also tested the Aura Rings with the same PSG device in the same setup. And as you can see, the results for the Apple Watches based on the PSG testing are in roughly the same region as they are for the EEG testing. So it's a first good sign for all the tests that I've done that the two reference devices are giving very similar results. 
And if we now plot the results from the O ring on my ring finger, based on the test I've showed you in this video in the same plot, we see it's super close to where the O rings were also based on the test I did before. So you can see it's right here, which is super close to the other two O ring tests. So it's overall agreement over the four sleep stages is quite good, as you can see here along the horizontal axis. But since REM sleep performed quite poorly for the O ring, which was his worst sleep stage, it's quite a bit lower on the vertical axis right here. And if we now plot the results for the second O-ring I tested in here, so the one on my index finger, we see it's almost in the exact same position in the plot, which again confirms that the results appear to be quite robust. So this is looking quite good. So the next question we want to answer is, how does this compare to the old sleep stage algorithm? Well, let's take a look. And those results are displayed right here. As you can see, the old algorithm is quite a bit further to the left, indicating that the overall performance is quite a bit worse. Now, again, the results for the two rings that I tested, so the one on my index finger and the ring finger are very very close to each other, indicating that the results are at least somewhat robust. But overall, this really shows us that the performance of the new algorithm is significantly better than the old one. But what about those people still rocking the old generation 2 ordering? Is that performance similar to either of these two results? Well, let's take a look. And well, as you can see, the O-ring 2, which is displayed by this dot right here, is very similar in performance to the old sleep stage algorithm on the O-ring 3s. So this seems to indicate to me that the old sleep stage algorithm on the O-ring 3 is basically identical to the performance you get with the O-ring 2. So based on that, I would conclude that if you use the old sleep staging algorithm, there's basically no difference between the generation 2 and the generation 3 O-ring. But the generation 3 O-ring is the only one that has the new improved sleep stage tracking. So if you want to get better sleep stage tracking you need to use the generation 3 ordering. So overall, the O-Ring's new sleep staging doesn't disappoint, but before I get to my final thoughts and recommendations, I want to tell you about some of the limitations in my testing. First of all, I only have data from five nights of sleep, which isn't quite enough for a conclusive test. However, I also compared the O-Ring's performance to my other EEG device over many, many nights, and the results are comparable, so I'm pretty confident the results are reliable. Second, I only test the O-Ring on myself, so it'd be great to also test it on others, for instance, on women or people with darker skin tones. But okay, given those limitations, what can we say about the performance of the O-Ring's new beta sleep stage algorithm? Well, overall, it seems to be doing quite well, and it's a significant improvement over the old algorithm. It does still lag just slightly behind the Apple Watches in terms of performance, but it's very, very close. And one upside compared to the Apple Watch is, of course, that the battery of the O-Ring will last you for about five days, whereas you need to charge the Apple Watch every day. And what is more important to me is that the health functionalities of the O-Ring app are much better than that for the Apple Watch. With the O-Ring, I can get an idea of my sleep quality and my general health deviations quite quickly and easily in the app, and this is much more tricky with the Apple Watch. The O-Ring is actually one of my main tools I personally use to keep track of my health and my sleep, and I'm happy now with the new sleep staging and improved even a bit further. Now, if you do decide to get an Aura Ring, I have an affiliate link in the description below if you want to support the channel. However, I would recommend first Googling for a discount link to see if any is available. Now, the main downside of the Aura Ring, for me personally at least, is that it isn't very good at tracking your heart rate during workouts, which is something that, for instance, the Apple Watch is great at. Now, if your focus is general health tracking and you also want to track your heart rate during workouts, another alternative would be the Whoop Strap, which is also a decent heart rate tracker. Now, if you want to buy an Aura Ring, a Whoop Strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. If you're interested in the Aura Ring, you probably want to know more about the Whoop Strap as an alternative for the Aura Ring, so check out this video right here. Or if you actually find heart rate tracking very important, check out these videos on the Apple Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch SE. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.